welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic on a very good day for me because I get to do a Fog of War puzzle and this one is called, well it's called Foggy YYSL and it's by Blobs um, and I think YYSL stands for Yin Yang Sight Lines uh, but I might be wrong. I have a feeling that Blobs has been doing a series um, based around those constraints and I've read the rules and that's my best guess anyway um, but obviously this is Fog of War so it's it's the greatest Sudoku innovation of recent months the idea is that you can place correct digits in the grid hopefully using the logic in the cells you can see and when you get a digit in the grid, so say you put in the correct digit in this square, it will clear all the fog from the surrounding three by three area. So it's just, it's the, the perfect way <laughs> to sort of combine computer solving and Sudoku variant variants. Um, and this puzzle is meant to be beautiful, obviously. So we'll have a look at the rules in a moment or two's time. Um, I've got a couple of things to tell you about today. I'm going to start with a shout out to Lana and Jamie, who had a tie dye weekend and converted some cracking the cryptic merchandise look um, into into this tie dye extravaganza. It's a it's a chromatic festival. And so that is very very cool indeed um yeah i'm not sure i'm not sure we can get spring who make our merch for us to to produce anything quite this exotic but i liked it very much so i thought i would share it with you um now the other thing is over on patreon our competition for september has now closed it is the 21st that is beyond the deadline for all time zones um so you can put down your pencils now. Uh, we'll be announcing the winner of, of the competition soon. Obviously, the winner will be receiving some special Cracking the Cryptic cap. There it is. That's probably about the right size today as well. Or maybe it needs to be over there a little bit more. Um, and yeah, but, but today we have a brand new uh, video up, a crossword video from Mark, in which he solves uh, a recent Matt Gaffney meta crossword. Now, Many of you will probably be unfamiliar with Matt Gaffney's um, meta crosswords. This is a series that's been running for years and years now, and it's a New York Times style crossword, so a fully checked grid. And then you, you fill the grid, and then you have to sort of work out something to answer a question. And the, these, these metas, as they're called, are incredibly ingenious. Um, and yeah, you get to see Mark solve one of those live. So uh, for some of you who like the crossword content, definitely check that out. That's over on Patreon right now. And I think Mark's actually recorded a solve of a recent listener as well. Um, but we, we can't release that until the closing date for that listener passes. Um, but that's going to be there in due course too. Um, other than that, what else do I need? I don't think I've got any other... Oh no, birthdays! Don't I mustn't forget the birthdays. I'm so sorry. Um, Alex, well, I didn't forget your birthday, but the message about your birthday, and you turned 30 yesterday, only came in after I'd recorded yesterday's video. Um, so sorry, I couldn't read it out then. Um, but you've been watching since 2020, and you've been surprised at how your Sudoku skills have sort of improved just from watching the channel such that when you've been attempting puzzles in our apps, you can, you can solve them. Well, that's, that's brilliant to hear. Very well done. I think you had vanilla cake yesterday on account of the fact you don't like chocolate cake. I'm sorry about that, but I can tell you that your wishes about Maverick not disturbing the videos yesterday did come to pass, I think. So thank you for those. Um, and today we have a birthday for Hidalgo over there in Venice, Italy, a beautiful city. I have been there two or three times. Absolutely wonderful place. Um, oh, and once I went there and, and Mark Square flooded, which was I was a bit perturbed by. Um, but anyway, you've turned 39 today and you've also been watching since 2020. So Hidalgo, happy birthday, my friend. And I hope you can have chocolate cake, maybe with some gelato uh to celebrate uh, and that's all the news so let's have a look at foggy yysl <laughs> which I, f I feel should have a different name somehow and see what blobs has got in store for us i like blobs's puzzles as a rule because they're, they're two things they're two difficult things to achieve firstly they're, they're they're witty and clever secondly they're normally quite approachable um so let's see if that proves to be the case here i, I forgot to look this up on logic masters germany if indeed it's there so i don't know uh, how hard this is meant to be. 
Uh, the rules are as follows, so normal Sudoku rules apply, so we need to put the digits 1 to 9 once each in every row, in every column, and in every 3x3 three three box. Digits in large circles must appear in the surrounding 2x2 two two area, so I think that's a 6 in there. So if assuming that is a 6, um, one of those four cells has to have a 6 in it. Um, so that's how that rule works. Digits separated by white dots are consecutive. OK, so we've got a whole load of those over here. Um, oh, digits separated by black dots have a two to one ratio, i.e. one digit is double the other. So we haven't got any black dots that we can see, but there might be some under the fog. Not all such dots are shown. So that, that that's there to just, I suppose, hammer home the point that, say, these two cells contained a one and a two, but there wasn't a white dot between them. That is absolutely fine. So we're just being given positive information about certain dominoes having to contain consecutive digits. It doesn't prevent other dominoes containing consecutive digits or indeed digits in a one to two ratio. Um, now, here's the yin yang. We've got to shade some cells such that all shaded cells are orthogonally connected. That orthogonally connected just means share an edge. So these two cells are not orthogonally connected. These two cells are. You can make these orthogonally connected by adding that one to the to the little coterie of cells that you've highlighted um, because all three of these cells can now be connected along joins that have a, that share an edge um, yes we need all shaded cells to be orthogonally connected all unshaded cells to be orthogonally connected and no two by two area to be fully shaded or fully unshaded so my <laughs> my normal way of illustrating how such a shading could work is to do something like boom that um, so imagine we had this as the final shading of the puzzle now if you examine the green cells you can see they're all joined together in one continuous lump along orthogonal connections there's no two by two area in green if you do the same with yellow you'll find exactly the same thing is true. So this, one day, this will probably be the yin-yang shading. Um, I can't tell whether it is today or not, actually, instantly. But that that is how that rule works. Let's restart the puzzle. Um, now, we've got more rules, though. Digits in caged cells indicate how many cells of the same colour, shaded or unshaded, are seen orthogonally from that position, including itself. The other colour blocks vision. Oh, I wish I hadn't actually got rid of that now. Um, because what that's saying is a sort of cave constraint. Um, and I think it's being used as a sort of a sight lines constraint um, by, by blobs in the title here. So let's do some shading. Let's imagine... Uh, let's imagine the shading did something like this. In fact, maybe I should use that one. That might be more sensible. But OK, imagine that is a caged cell. Then I think what you do is you add up all of the cells that this, this cell can see of its own colour in orthogonal direction. So this would be 7, and you would write 7. If this was caged, you write 7 into here. Let's do it with this one, but let's, let's imagine that was the shading. Obviously, I don't think this could be the shading for certain yin-yang-related secrets, but let's imagine that this was OK. Then you would fill this one in with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because this one can see, it can sort of see, as well as itself, it can see four other cells. So I think that would be a five. Um, that is how I understand the rule to work. I hope I've got it right, otherwise I'm soon going to get the puzzle wrong. Um, all dots lie on the boundary of the yin-yang pattern, i.e. each dot touches one shaded and one unshaded cell. Okay, so we know that these two are of a different colour, these two are of a different colour, etc. Um, and finally, the grid is partially covered in fog and placing correct digits will clear the fog from the surrounding cells, possibly revealing more clues. So that is something we understand well. Maverick! Maverick! After Alex, Alex warned Maverick off yesterday, Maverick, I can hear, has just taken off. I suspect we will be buzzed past soon. Anyway, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, and 
Right. What I what I'm going to do actually before we I start wondering about what's going on down here is I'm going to tell you some secrets about yin yang because I've no doubt they're going to be important here. Um, there are two secret, well, two related secrets about yin yang. The first is that in a yin yang puzzle, you can never have. Oh, let's uh, let's do these in a different color so we can see. You can never have a checkerboard pattern emerging in the yin yang because because of this requirement that we that both the green and the yellow areas have to be orthogonally connected because in in making the yellow area a single orthogonally connected unit however we perform that connection whether we went over this way or round this way as i've shown here you can see this little cell and this little cell now can't be be made orthogonally connected without passing through yellow and that's that's not going to work so you can't have a checkerboard now there's an implication that follows from this which is that you've got to be very careful with the perimeter of yin yang puzzles because you can't have too many changes of color along the perimeter so let's let's imagine we had some yellow there and some green there now um no in fact let's ungreen those let's say that we had this pattern the question is could any of these cells be yellow let's let's see let's make a couple of them yellow and think about what that means well again we've got the requirement remember to connect the greens to each other so however i perform this connection whatever circuitous route i take to to achieve that connection you can see i'm isolating this yellow from this yellow and that's never going to work so what we what we've got to remember is that the perimeter of a yin yang puzzle can only have one change of color along it basically so it can we can have a stripe of yellow a stripe of green and that's it we can't have any more oscillations um, you could in fact i think have one color only in the perimeter uh, i think that would be possible um, but yeah you certainly can't have lots of changes of color okay so with those secrets revealed I wonder if there'll be any other secrets we'll need to avail ourselves of in this puzzle. Um, but let's try and do some shading in, the, in this box because we're told, well, this is sort of an isolated cell, isn't it? Let's make that, I don't know, uh, orange. Um, this cell, we're, we're told that white dots separate cells of different yin yang colors. So if we make this orange, these three all have to be the same yin yang color. Um, I, w I was going to use blue, blue simply because I know orange and blue are the best colours um, in our palette for people who suffer with colour blindness. I'm just a bit nervous that the that the blue is quite close to the grey, but I, I can see the difference. So I hope people with colour blindness will be able to. I'm nervous if I go green yellow then or something like that then people will say no no it didn't work um i think i'm safest going for for orange and blue now and you can see immediately here we've got some opportunities to avoid a checkerboard because if that's orange i've got a checkerboard i've said we've said we can't have that if this is orange we've got a checkerboard and now this orange is sort of penned in by a, a corral of u pentomino blueliness and therefore it's got to get out so that's got to go there um, otherwise there'd be lots of two by twos of blue in the rest of the grid um, all right so if that's orange that's blue because it's on the other side of a ooh, well hmm I was going to I was going to, to say well now I've got to connect these up because I can't have too many changes of color in the perimeter that's not actually valid is it because what we could have is a little bit of orange here and then the blue going all the way around the grid to there so we can't assume anything about that we know that there's a six probably I think that is a six in one of these squares oh yeah okay but the cages the cages are sight lines aren't they um hang on let me go back to the rules digits in cage cells yes that's a two <laughs> it only sees two <laughs> in that direction so it must it must be a two and now this is going to clear some fog i think boom um 
Oh no. Okay. Well, well now six can't go here because six and two are not consecutive digits. So six is in one of those. Ah, now look, but we've got more, more dots have emerged from the fog. So that's got to be orange. That's got to be orange. Right. Okay. So that, right. This being orange is key because now we can't make the blue go round that way because it will bump into orange. Um, so in, in other words, these blues have to connect with one another. Yeah, the way you, imagine one of these was orange. How would you connect it to that orange without isolating this blue? You couldn't do it. So these are both blue. Um, and, the, and this orange still has to get out now, so it's got to grow. Now, what does that mean? Um, well, these these have got to be consecutive with two, so they have to be a one three pair, don't they? That's got to be from one and three as well. We might as well pencil mark everything that we can. This cell is a cage cell, so it's just counting how many blues it sees in the bottom row because it sees an orange above it. So that's a four, I think. Yes, <laughs> I didn't realise that there was no, there was fog there, but apparently there was. So that's got to be our six now. Whoa, okay, so we're getting some stuff done here. Uh, ooh. Well. Okay, there's something, there's something interesting going on about with these two cages now. Because... These two cages, if we look, if we think about vertically, however blue go, however far blue goes up in this column, these two cages see all of those blues, don't they? But so the difference in value between these two cells is going to be the fact that this corner cell, it sees three blues on its right, but this one doesn't. So this digit should be three greater than this. And that means this can't be. Um, yeah, if we think about the actual options then for this cell, which has to be consecutive with six, it's five or seven here. So imagine that was a seven. That's saying that there are seven blues seen in this column. Eight, nine, ten would be the minimum we could put in the corner. And ten, here is a knowledge bomb, is not a valid Sudoku digit. So I think that's a five. Um, Okay, and that means, so So we now, well, we now know, we now know exactly how, yeah, this is huge, because it's going to basically do the whole perimeter in terms of um, shading, because they've got to be five uh, blues in this column, so those are all blue, then this must be yellow, sorry, orange, oh. uh, now orange now, because the perimeter has to be just two colours, has to go all around here. We've got to avoid two by twos in the corner. So those all turn blue. This hasn't got out, so it's got to grow. Um, that we said was going to be three greater than um, this digit. So let's just check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, these two squares are a seven, nine pair and we're off to the races. This is lovely as well, isn't it? It's not too difficult so far, but it's just beautiful. Um, and we are going to write now how do we do this does th no this blue could go over here oh so we don't know whether this comes out here i don't think uh oh okay but that's a six so we can do the count for this one one two three four five six so these two have got to be orange that's got to be blue to stop the, the site being any further than six Uh, so this blue, hmm, not sure. Uh, what's what else can we do down here? Can we do anything else? There's got to be an even digit on this on this white dot. <laughs> that is the nature of consecutive numbers. There will always be an odd and an even digit. So we can see that two of the even digits. There are four even digits in Sudoku: two, four, six, and eight. So two or six. Well. No, that's not right. I was going to. I was wondering whether I could use this to li to limit two being on here, but I don't think I can. 
it would just if two is on here we'd have a one two three triple that would make this four eight um that is okay that no that's okay isn't it this digit is a caged cell that digits oh for goodness sake right sorry this is <laughs> this one is where we go next that is caged and it has a blue on its left so it just sees the whole of the column that's a nine i think we right oh now look that's got to be orange by by dint of dotage this blue has to get out and then that's got to be orange by dint of dotage that's got to be blue by dint of two by two avoidance this has to be blue by dint of cul de sac um, That's got to be blue because of 2 by 2 age And that's got to be blue because of checkerboard. <laughs> so there's a lot going on here, actually. Um, and that's, that is a 2 because it's the same as this. It's, it's, we've sort of created a little, a little thingy. Um, Right, okay, so now 2 has to be consecutive with 1 and 3, so let's pencil mark those in. That can't be 1, because the only the only digit that's in a 1 to 2 ratio with 1 is 2. So if I put make this 1, that's a 2, and we've got two twos in row 2, so that's not going to work. That's got to be 3, that's got to be 1. This square now is 4, because we've got to go 1, 2, 3, 4. We can't go 1, 2, 3, 2, um, because we'll have two twos, so that's 4. Um, this now has to be five because it can't be three. So we, we, we're sort of doing okay here. One around this quadruple clue has to go there. We're clearing the fog with some sort of alacrity. This is very enjoyable. Um, that is on a black dot. So that's a six. Uh, no, I was about to say I can do nine. I can't do not. I can do no such thing. So nine is down there. Um... Right, okay, so we're stuck again now. That looks like it's a two. <laughs> can, I, can I rely on that? If so, well, that's actually interesting because there's a two here, so there has to be a two on, in this domino, which has a dot on it. So this, these squares have got to be um, from the digits one, two, and three. Although that doesn't actually seem to be resolving much. Um, Oh, I see. Right, I've got to I've got to do more shading, don't I? Because I've got this dot here. I've not made that orange. I don't think that's going to do very much, but it is at least true. This is at least a seven. Four, five, six. Right. So that's got to be. Yeah, there's a bit of shading we can do here because this is at least it needs to see at least seven blues so imagine it saw imagine all of these were blue it still has to see three blues that way for sure and maybe further and similarly even if it sees everything horizontally that it can see it still has to see this still has to be blue and that means this is always orange even without the dot because of the two by two avoidance rule Now, um, blue, orange, orange, blue. Is there some problem with one of those variations? I don't know, maybe. Oh, hang on, there's, there's another dot here, so that's got to be blue. I've now got to avoid a two by two, so that's got to be orange. Um, this orange is on a dot, so that's got to be blue. I've got to avoid a checkerboard, so that's got to be blue. Um, oh, hang on. Now, now, now what's going on? That orange has to get out, so that's got to drop. That's now become blue by dint of this dot. This orange still has to get out, so that's got to be orange. This six is is finished so that's got to be orange that's got to be orange this blue has to get out oh hang on i thought it was going to have to come down here that's not true at all it just has to it just has to attach to this blue because this blue could get it it could go down there or something couldn't it, it doesn't have to come through that cul-de-sac 
I think it would be really easy to miss one of these dots and their implications, partly because I don't feel like I'm completely au fait with the, the difference in the colours. Um, well, here's, here's a small... Oh, this is lovely. Right. Look at this dot. We said I can't remember where it was. I said that a dot had to have an even digit on it. Well, a dot also has to have an odd digit on it. So which odd digit are we putting on this dot when 1, 5, 7 and 9 are not available? We're going to have to put 3 on, aren't we? So that's 3 and this can't be 4. So that's got to be 2. These squares are now 4, 6 and 8. Ah, oh, this is just gorgeous. Now, in this box, where, is, where does 6 and 8 go? The answer is in those cells by our fair weather friend Sudoku. Um, these squares are now 5 and 7. And the bottom of this column is 1, 2 and 3 by Sudoku. And now what should we do? No, I was thinking I could do something with that, but that's not right. There's got to be an even digit on this, which is either going to be 4 or 8. think both are possible. Um, it looks like there's some sort of checkerboard problem we're going to have there in a moment or two's time, doesn't it? What about... Ah, okay, this dot now, we said that had to have an even digit earlier. It now can't have the digit 2 on it, because if it does have 2 on it, these cells here will only be selectable from the digits 1, 2 and 3 and there are four such cells so we will inevitably repeat a digit so this is going to have to have 6 on it which I don't think actually is going to be terribly oh ne no it nearly did something but then it didn't so these squares are from 5, 6 and 7 um, which is potentially interesting, but not interesting enough, right? Okay, what's going on? <laughs> um, are we going? I'm about to get monumentally stuck. I fear so. Can do we know what that is yet? That feel. I mean, if that's nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, it can be nine. All of those would be blue. Let's double actually let's let's go to colours and double click just to, just so I can check whether there's any yin yang things that I've not I've not picked up on. It looks like have I have <laughs> I'm trying to check whether I've done both sides of the dots because that sort of feels important, doesn't it? Ah what about that one then? This, this cell is a caged cell. It already sees four. So it is at least a four. So it has to therefore be four, six or eight. And it can't, well, it's not six. We know six is down there. So it is four or eight. It can't, it can't be eight, can it? Gosh, that's that's quite a subtle point. But I think it's right. If it was eight... It seems to only be able to see five vertically and it can see one horizontally. So its maximum count is six. So that is a four. That's that's gorgeous. Right. What's that doing? This now is, is two or eight. Be useful if it was two, wouldn't it? Oh, well, hang on. If it's two, then it's a caged cell as well, so that would be doing all sorts of things. Okay, we know that's two or eight. We don't know which, or I don't think we do. Um, okay, so if this is four, that has to be orange, doesn't it? That's an, that's a fairly straightforward deduction um, because it needs to stop seeing any further northwards. Now, now we have to avoid a checkerboard, so that has to be orange. Now we have to avoid a two by two, so that has to be blue. And all of these, look, are, you know, these are all caged cells. So we're going to have to be careful with them in terms of making sure they see the correct number of cells from a sightlines perspective. 
Hmm, okay. What am I most likely to be missing here? Sudoku. Is there some Sudoku I could do? Two, so three, four, five, six, eight. Oh. <laughs> you rotten thing. You rotten thing. That is outrageous. <laughs> Making me do Sudoku in your Sudoku puzzle blobs. Especially, I've, uh, half an hour. Half an hour, you could have at least waited. Um, that is a naked single. It's rather a pretty one, actually. Uh, one, two, three, seven and nine. Eight, four, and this beautiful six on this white dot, I think means this only has one option, which is five. Ah, uh, okay. Um, right. Um, do I need to think about that again? That's possible, isn't it? So I've got four, six, and eight to place. Four. Oh, nearly. Yeah, there, there's definitely some trickery going on here. These are four, six, or eight. That's not four. Oh, so look, where does four go in this column? It's only got one place to go. Are oh, you rotten, rotten uh, man? Um, okay. All right. What does this mean? What does this work? Well, oh, so that. Oh, the five. Look, that's doing some work here. So that becomes a six, seven pair. So, no, oh, I thought nine might be gettable. But maybe not. Uh, that is a four. That is, that's a dot thing, so we need to think about that in a second or two once I've worked out what's going on. Um, can we do this? Does it now, does it now just all fall apart? I don't know, actually. One, two, three, and, yeah, this is, this is a naked single, isn't it? I think. If we look at look at the bottom row, we've got one, two, three, and nine to place, and one, two, and three are there, so that is nine. Yep, that was right. Uh, which means this square here is from one, two, or three. Um, so here we need to put six, seven, and eight in, and that's not able to be six. Yes. Okay. This this dot here can't have two four or six on it so it does have eight in one of its cells doesn't it uh, which means this square is um, from seven eight or nine it's not got seven on it so that square is now eight or nine so if that if that's nine that's eight if that's eight that's seven This square here can't be eight. There's no way of getting to that count because it's it's penned in on all sides. That's a two. That's going to oh, hang on. That didn't clear any fog. That might be wrong then. Is there any fog left around here? To um, hmm, I can't. That two is going to get. I've got rid of fog here. That four is going to have got rid of all that fog. And that nine's getting rid. No, okay. So that that not that's not necessarily wrong then. This being a two, so that's now a one or a three. Two. Oh, we don't get a, we don't get a three in the corner. I'm afraid we have to put a two in the corner. We've now got a one three pair here. So this square is an eight or a nine, and that means that square is a seven. But we know that there's an eight on this dot, so that's got to be eight. That's got to be nine. That did clear some fog, so that feels like we're on the right track. Two. Look two around this dot now so it seems to have to be there ah oh, this is brilliant this is just brilliant and now what's going on here so now we've got a six eight pair that's emerged in the fog yeah where does five go in this row that's got to be here when 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 there's no sort of no reve revelation of fog i get very concerned um we can probably start to pencil mark these in in a moment as well but let me just mull let me just mull everything else over we've got these have to be different is there some way i know which they are have i oh no that i've got okay so i've got that's the that's the pattern of blues that we've got at the moment 
that digit's interesting. That, that sees one, two, three, and four, so it's at least a five, which means I have to shade both of these blue uh, in order to achieve five at least. I've got to shade these two blue. Now, has that done anything to the world? Not really. Oh, no, well, hang on. No, it has a bit. That orange hasn't got out, so that's now orange. Um, yeah, it's going to be something to do with this, I think. Because this one is currently... It's seeing... F oh, no, hang on, it's not, is it? It's, actually, this is... Oh, no, that's a two. So that's seen, that's seen everything it's meant to see. So I've got to make that blue. And now I've got to avoid a checkerboard. So that's got to be blue. And now I can use the white dot. So that's got to be orange. That blue's got to get out of the corner. That's a four. So, oh, well, it, well we've proved it's a four by some other means. Um, I don't know how we did that, but we have. Um, right, so what on earth is going on now? Right, this cell sees four five at the moment so it's at least a five but i think the interesting thing is that this cell is bigger isn't it by exactly one is that fair to say because what i'm thinking is these two cells see everything that they see the same count of orange in the row they're either going to see depends whether that's orange or not but they're, go they're going to either see those or they're going to see those so the difference in their values is how many cells they see in the vertical plane. Now this one sees that one, this one sees two. So the count of this should be one higher than the count of that one. So that's um, five or six. Now, I'm just actually thinking, well, what are the options? The only other option this has got is if this turns orange. And then that will be a seven because it will it'll effectively pick up two more. So that is five or seven, which means this is six or eight. Now, which one of those is correct? <laughs> Do we really not know? I don't know. I can't see how to do that. I'm sure that's done somehow. It's probably Sudokuable, isn't it? Um, no, I don't know. <laughs> Do I know what that is then? So we've worked out this is at least five, didn't we? It's five. And if it picks up another blue here, it becomes seven. So that's five or seven as well. That These two are sort of have the same. So there's a five, seven pair in row three. This square here is four or eight because it can't be six. I don't know. I can't see how to do that. Um, ah, ah, this one is a seven. It's been, we've, we've resolved it. That's been resolved for ages. I hope you haven't been shouting at me. Sorry if you have. Right, so that's eight, that's six. Has that helped us? Well, it has a bit, actually. Six in box one I can now place by our fairweather friend Sudoku. That has done something up here. Well, it's given me a four, because that seems to be a caged cell that we know the count for. Oh, that's great. That four has given me this one, so that's got to be eight now, which means this is seven. Um, now, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. So this is blue. Ah, now look at this orange shade. That's lovely, actually. So it, this we ha we have we really have had to wait until this box resolved in order to finally determine how this orange connected to the rest of the grid because it could have come through over here before. Now it has to come through there. And now we know now we know all cages in the grid because all um, all of the cells have been f or all of the shading has been done. So that's a five, I think, which ought to mean that <laughs> this is a six. Now we get more shading. That's got to be, I was about to say a two. That's total rubbish. It's a four. And this one is a three, I think. It's going to be, oh, that's given me that one. 
and that one, and that one, and that one. Good. Uh, that six is giving me that one and that one. Uh, and that's giving me that one and that one. That cleared some fog. Okay. Is this good? Have we have we cracked the back of this now? Maybe. Let's think. Um, I don't know yet. Yeah, look at this dot. That dot has to have eight on it because two, four, and six have gone. So the eight goes at the top of the grid. That can't be nine by Sudoku, so that's seven. That means these in this column we've not placed one and three, and we now can, which makes this a two. Now that's an eight by Sudoku. That's a seven, and that's a nine. Wow. Wow, this dot has to have a two on it because it can't have four, six, and eight. It's 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 such a cool trick, isn't it? It really is. Five, um, something, and nine. I can see three and nine. Five, three, and nine. Is this done? Three. Yeah. Where does three? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Where does three go in this box? It goes there. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight. Losing its religion. That's a five by Sudoku, I think. Um, so these squares are a five, nine pair. Oh, I've just seen how I might be able to resolve that. This seven is doing some work. Seven, five, five, nine. Nine goes here. We need one and four into this box, which we can put in. Uh, that's no longer eight. That's no longer four. That's no uh, chocolate teapot time. Those don't seem to be resolved yet. What about the, that dot? Is that done? Or maybe maybe this column first. Four, six, nine. Yes, that's got a six there. Um, <laughs> we got another another thingy revealed. Um, actually, the nine and the four are done as well. Let's put that in. That that does our chocolate teapot over here. This is eight. This is six. This is nine. This is seven. Now, okay, we can just fill this in. One, two, that's a five. Um, that's done. I think that did the last of the fog. And it and it was correct because it seems to work from a white dot perspective. So in this column, we need one and seven, which we can write in. And now we just need three and eight. And it looks good on both sides. So I think this is correct. That's lovely, isn't it? Let's double click the colors just to absolutely make sure there's no two by twos. Feels right, doesn't it? Let's click tick. Yay, lovely, absolutely beautiful. 10 people have solved it in four days. Well, those 10 people, which and I'm one of them, have had a very, very nice time. Beautiful blobs, absolutely beautiful. Really, really liked the, the flow of that. And I like the way that the white dots were used and the way that you had to keep thinking about the various aspects of the puzzle. It wasn't just do yin yang then do sudoku or do sight lines then do sudoku. At all times you had to sort of be fairly flexible. Really really good fun. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.